going to the Iroquois, going to the Bravo Model Iroquois was um, quite an exercise in unlearning a whole bunch of things. Um, particularly having come off a jet, uh, you just never used your feet. And the rudder pedals were there for, for the brakes, and the brakes were attached to them, whereas on a helicopter, obviously, rudder pedals are everything. Um, and uh, it was always amusing to everyone watching the new courses arrive at uh, Fairbairn and uh, attempt to hover and wind up when eventually they totally lost control, the instructor taking over and stopping them again. And uh, it, was, it was an exercise uh, took quite some getting used to. Um, once you got into the air flying the, the aircraft, it behaved more or less like a normal aircraft. But, um, but yeah, the hovering and the approaching confined pa uh, spaces and things like that was, was challenging. Funnily enough, I, I don't recall anyone actually, such was the Air Force, anyone actually failing, um, just that they didn't progress as quickly as, as others. Uh, pro probably I should have been, I might have been one of those, but um, we had a very disjointed conversion. Um, uh, started off badly, we arrived there and uh, there was a flight lieutenant, TCR of the squadron at the time, we were a week early, what are you doing here? And um, flight lieutenant Gill said, well go away, come back next week when everything's, and so we came on, well, an extra week's leave. Came back, started the course and about, uh, about a month later, we had a fatal accident uh, two ops flight guys were killed, um, one of whom was a New Zealand officer on exchange. He was passing through five squadron on his way to Vietnam. Um, but it just came as a bit, of a, a bit of a shock, but not a total shock, because the Air Force in those days, you expected people to die, expected people to have crashes and things. Um, which is not the case these days, I'm happy to say. Um, after the squadron was ungrounded without any conclusive reason why the aircraft had broken up in flight. Um, uh, in early April, so three months into the course, two of our course mates were killed when another aircraft broke up in flight, another Bravo, um, and uh, after which the squadron was grounded for quite some time. Um, a whole bunch of different maintenance people were brought back into the system um, suddenly our serviceability went from something like about 10 or 15 per cent to 80 per cent and um, that problem went away. Uh, but it was a bit, bit sobering, so it took us nearly six months to finish our, our conversion, whereas it should have been about half that. So, so these were mechanical failures? Yeah, well they were, they were never, ever, uh, even though they were investigated by the, our Air Force, the US Army team and some representatives of Bell, no one ever came out with a conclusive reason for these two accidents. There was another one that broke up in flight uh, some years later at Williamtown, uh, another Bravo, and um, yeah, there were some mechanical issues that, and design issues identified then that maybe, maybe not happened in the, in the first first couple of accidents. Um, so one of the issues we did have though, in terms of, and why there was suspicion fell on the engineering side, was that um, I mentioned about how, if you're a pilot, you went, <laughs> up until about my era, you went to Vietnam, came back, and then went back to fighters or transports, wherever you wanted to go. Similar things happened with the engineering people. So that they came in, did the helicopter course at Canberra, went to Vietnam, and then went back to wherever. So we had a very small cadre of of engineers uh, overseeing a bunch of relatively inexperienced people. Um, no reflection whatsoever on anyone involved, but it wasn't a good, wasn't a good system of um, uh, personnel management and, and to, hence we had this appalling, you know, the, the senior engineering officer would stand up at morning briefing and say, uh, we've got, you know, Willie, we've got two Bravos and two Deltas online. Um, and so you couldn't really run a flying program out of that, but you did your best. Um, so it was very disjointed. Uh.